American police. Friend or enemy. Good or bad. To be honest, I don't care what you think. I'm just here to tell you the history. The U.S. police force is a relatively modern invention. But, to be fair, the United States itself is also a relatively young country. To understand this, let's go back to a time where men wore tights regularly and tea parties were all too common. It all started with the Night Watch. This system was started in Boston in 1636 and was adopted by New York a little over a decade later. The system allowed colonists to sign up for certain days and times and patrol the streets at night looking for bad guys. They would mostly look out for prostitutes and gamblers, ensuring their fellow colonists were following the rules. This system was widely ineffective, however, as most colonists either drank or slept during their shift. Many people were often forced into the position, as night watch duty was often used as a form of punishment. The operation itself was overseen by appointed constables. Naturally, with a system like this, supplementary protection was often required, and inevitably hired, for those who could afford it. And that's pretty much just the way things were, for over a hundred years. If we fast forward a bit to the Gilded Age, where we see America with a population on the rise, and rapid industrialization, the Night Watch became so ineffective it was eventually abandoned altogether. Thus, Boston was the first city to adopt a full-time, publicly funded police force. A step in the right direction for sure, but maybe not for the right reasons. You see, at the time, Boston was a massive center for shipping and commercial activity. I'm talking big money. So naturally, companies had been paying people to protect their property. As this got expensive, merchants came together and transferred the cost of the protection to citizens, justifying it as being for the common good. In the South, it was also economics that drove the creation for a police force, but in a different circumstance. Some of the most primary policing institutions were made up of slave patrols, tasked with chasing down runaways and preventing slave revolts. The first formal slave patrol was created in the Carolina colonies in 1704. The ever-changing social climate in America was the primary driver for the police force, with labor unions striking and waves of European immigrants arriving in droves, it's no surprise that almost all U.S. major cities had a police force by the late 1880s. It's also definitely worth noting that the newfound law and order is very different from what we know today. The late 19th century was a very politically charged time period, and police sergeants and captains were often picked by political leaders of the precinct in which they served. This made political harassment and corruption quite easy and quite common. Police could also be paid off to turn a blind eye to gambling, prostitution, or pretty much any crime the party deemed acceptable. So when did things change? When did things get normal? It all started with August Vollmer. This guy was so influential that he was nicknamed the father of modern policing. Vollmer did a number of things and focused on making the police force professionalized. He ensured that policemen went to college and patrolled their own neighborhoods on foot. He also created a juvenile detention system, ensuring that children were not tried as adults. The Wickersham Commission was appointed in 1929 by President Herbert Hoover with the purpose of investigating the ineffectiveness of law enforcement nationwide. Instead of focusing on Vollmer's model, which focused mainly on psychology and sociology, Hoover focused mainly on street crimes. Precincts were redrawn and political influence was removed from the law. Officers were less focused on community-based policing and now patrolled neighborhoods by car. Around this time, during the Prohibition, state police was created with the purpose of patrolling highways in rural areas. Gangsters and booze runners would often use highways to transport illegal alcohol, and organized crime also became very prevalent in the early 1900s. It's safe to say that city police could definitely use the help. From that point on, policing became more and more professionalized, thus birthing the career police officer that we see so often today. This means the concept as a whole is less than a century old. Now, we didn't get to where we are today overnight. Let's fast forward a few years to the 1960s. Peaceful protests, boycotts, and riots took place in coercion with the civil rights movement. 
One famous event was the raiding of the Stonewall Inn in 1969. Police stormed through the doors one night and arrested many of the patrons. In response, the patrons, who were predominantly members of the LGBTQ community, fought back, sparking a riot that lasted six days. The 60s was a decade of civil unrest and sparked many changes in the years to come. In the mid-1970s, a multitude of studies were conducted with the goal of gauging the effectiveness of police in America. With negative results, a number of reforms were put in place. One survey conducted in Kansas City showed that patrolling in police cars did not reduce crime, but instead made residents more uncomfortable. In response to many of the findings, some police departments returned to community policing. By the early 2000s, two-thirds of police departments across the United States had implemented this policy. If you want to learn more about current police reforms, turn on any news channel ever. We are in a pivotal time in America, and there is no doubt in my mind that we will see massive changes across the nation in the years to come. Stay tuned for my next video on police, where I'll go in-depth on some of the modern police reform that have occurred over the last 20 years. And in the meantime, do me a favor, have a slice of pie. Thank you for watching History and Beyond. From now on, our videos will be coming out every week, so I better see you there. Good day.